Remember, you matter signs posted around campus. Robots in the RPAC. And what's coming up in Buckeye Sports. That's all right here on Lantern News Now. Thank you for joining us. I'm Elizabeth Suarez. And I'm Jamela Mohammed. You're watching Lantern News Now. Ohio State has created a mental health task force after two people in four days have fallen from the Ohio Union parking garage. Last week, a second year student died after falling from the garage. On Sunday, a former student fell from the same garage and was in critical condition at Wexner Medical Center as of Monday. President Drake has also directed public safety to review facilities to enhance safety measures on campus. Student organizations posted flyers throughout campus Monday night to remind students that they matter and to bring awareness to the mental health resources on campus. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline can be reached at 1-800-273-8255. To speak with a trained crisis counselor available any day at any time, text HOME to 741741 for the crisis text line. If you're in Ohio, text 4HOPE to the same number. College-age students are not usually affected by Alzheimer's, but students in Buckeyes Against Alzheimer's are spreading awareness of the disease by showing how changes in your current lifestyle can prevent you from developing it later on in life. Lantern TV reporter Shannon Litton brings us more. Brain Health Awareness Week kicked off last Monday and brought five events put on by the Buckeyes Against Alzheimer's. Let's see, Monday was our brain healthy uh, cooking demo, so we made smoothie bowls that are brain healthy. On Tuesday we had um, an event with like service dogs, so we, uh, we were out with four Paul's for Ability. Wednesday we had a brain health trivia night. And then on Thursday we were passing out chocolates on the Oval. And then we have our big event today, uh, just trying to get the word out there about our organization and about Alzheimer's in general. But you may be telling yourself, I'm a college student, why should I care about this right now? Well, only 5% of cases of Alzheimer's are like genetic and the rest are um, of the way of your lifestyle, so how you live. On top of the fun and games, the event was able to provide students with tips on how they can be aware of Alzheimer's in their everyday lives. Eating healthy, uh, trying to eat that Mediterranean diet, so not too much like fat and grease, things like that. Trying to exercise as much as you can during the week um, so that your body is active and is as healthy as it can be and your metabolic rates are where they should. And then keeping your brain active. Awareness. That's why the Buckeyes Against Alzheimer's are here today. Alzheimer's is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. The CDC projects that by 2050, that number will triple fold, which means that one in three of us will probably get Alzheimer's when we're senior citizens. Alzheimer's doesn't have a cure. The final goal is to get a cure for Alzheimer's. And to get a cure for Alzheimer's, we need the same support cancer is getting to send money into research that'll help overall. For Lantern TV, I'm Shannon M. Litton. Robots took over the RPAC as the Department of Engineering hosted its 24th annual robot competition. 63 teams of four students designed their robots over the course of nine weeks and got to display their hard work on Saturday. Lantern TV was there for all the action. Here's more. Every year we have a different scenario to keep everything fresh. The scenario selection, the construction, design, maintenance, controlling of the physical course is all done by our teaching assistants, undergraduates and graduates. The day before the semester started, they had their first meeting to begin selecting the scenario. This year, the scenario is a racing pit stop. In the past, we've done things like a volcanic research facility, a moon base, inside a candy shop, helping on a farm. We've done a lot of different things in the last 24 years. This is Tam. Um, we named her after our names, a little acronym. She has a QR code up top, which helps her do GPS on the course, and some motors tucked underneath and she's controlled by the Proteus, and that kind of runs it all. We coded it, and it just runs the code autonomously and has to traverse the course. We find that when they interview for jobs, they talk about this experience a lot. They talk about specific details of coding the robot, because they're all autonomous, so they're not being controlled by joysticks. They're putting the robot down on the course, and it's supposed to know what to do. So they have to write some very sophisticated computer code. They have to learn how to do electrical connecting and soldering and designing. They have to do all that documentation. They have to learn how to work with each other. Now let's check in with Lantern TV reporter Joe Matz for an update on the past week in politics. Joe? Thanks, Jamila. 
On Saturday, a suspected chemical attack in Douma, a rebel-held town in Syria, has caused turbulence at the international level. Graphic videos circulating on social media alerted leaders around the world to the deaths of dozens of Syrian men, women, and children. Clinics were filled with victims seeking treatment and they showed signs of both chlorine and nerve agent exposure. Syria has denied the attack and Russia announced the troops deployed into the area found no trace of any use of chemical weapons. At the UN, the U.S. ambassador said the U.S. will respond and that the White House says that all options are on the table. The Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons has announced that it will start an investigation into the attack soon. After the Cambridge Analytica scandal, Facebook came under fire from U.S. citizens and the U.S. government. CEO Mark Zuckerberg testified to Congress Tuesday and Wednesday about its misuse of data. Zuckerberg was largely apologetic, calling the failure to stop Russian influence in the 2016 election one of his greatest regrets. The larger question that arose during the testimony was how lawmakers will treat the tech industry moving forward. The government has allowed companies like Facebook to mostly self-regulate, and it has led to mistakes and consequences. Now, lawmakers are considering the challenge of regulating established tech giants like Facebook and Twitter. Zuckerberg supported some regulation, like the Honest Ads Act, which would require more information for online advertisers. However, he made it clear that Facebook is working on regulations of its own. On Monday, federal agents raided the office of President Trump's personal attorney, Michael Cohen. They were looking for information about payments to two women who claimed that they had affairs with Trump. The president took his anger out on Twitter, calling the Mueller investigation an attack on our country. Later, the White House announced that the president has the power to fire the special counsel. This reignited the debate about his ability to do so, and on Wednesday, Congress took steps to protect Mueller. A bipartisan group of senators introduced the Special Counsel Independence and Integrity Act, which, if passed, would explicitly prevent the president from firing a special counsel. Now, let's check in with the sports desk. Thanks, Joe. Saturday is going to be packed with action in Buckeye sports. Men's lacrosse is looking to right their season with a matchup with Michigan at 11. Men's tennis is playing host to the Fighting Illini of Illinois at noon. Women's soccer kicks off with Michigan at 5 in Jesse Owens Memorial Stadium, while men's volleyball will look to advance to the MIVA semifinals with a win over Quincy at 7. And last but certainly not least, the Ohio State football team is holding their annual spring game on Saturday at 1.45 p.m. in the shoe. Now let's throw it over to weather to see just how rainy it'll be on Saturday for the Buckeyes. Thank you. Now, I'm meteorologist Grace Devine here at Lantern TV to give you your weather for this weekend. Outside, right now, we're seeing a lot much warmer weather than we have been seeing previously, a temperature of 63 degrees, and that temperature today is just going to keep on going up. We are seeing some strong winds, though, at 60 miles per hour right now. We can see it get up to 20 miles per hour today, but the sun is in the sky, and it's a lot warmer today. As we go on through tomorrow, you may have heard it's going to be so warm out. We're going to see temperatures get up to possibly 77, but like I said, it'll be clear skies for us, some like passing clouds, but overall it'll be a nice day. As we go on through tomorrow night though, you see this precipitation out west, that's going to move on through and we are unfortunately going to see some rain on Saturday. So Saturday is the spring game, so we will be seeing some rain. Temperature 69 degrees though, still warm. And like I said, tomorrow's gonna be getting up to 77. Then on Sunday, we'll see the temperature drop down just a bit and some more rain coming our way on Sunday. So I know you're mostly concerned probably for the spring game on Saturday. So when we wake up Saturday, we are going to be seeing some rain continue on through the afternoon. As we go on through later in the day, we will see it stop around 4 p.m., but after that will be on again, off again for the rest of the evening and then continuing with us on Sunday. And then next week, we'll be seeing the rain finally stopping after Monday with some cloudy skies throughout the week, but some nice weather coming our way. So go out there and enjoy your weather. Back to you. That's all we have for you this week on Lantern News Now. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Also, got the Lantern on Snapchat. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.